Hola, mi nombre es Kadir. Welcome to Spanish Conmigo. And we're talking about bass slang. Hopefully, you're into your first month. You might start your second month. And you're ready to push yourself a little bit more. Because I'm trying to push myself a little bit more also. Okay? And one of the things I want you to do to push yourself along to get you uh, a little bit further up that hill to fluency. Remember I told you about your three books. I want you have your... I'll read you for it. Your book, which is your Spanish stuff. Little stuff that you want to tell yourself to remind yourself, you know, about miscellaneous stuff. You have your frequency sentences. You have your book of verbs. And you should have your language book where you have your lines down and you have your, you know, the word you're learning and in the English form. So you could, you know, hopefully in the morning or twice a day, you are going through your personal dictionary of verbs, personal dictionary of words that you know to expand what you know because pr pretty soon gato is going to be in you you're not even going to think about gato okay but you're going to make you're going to continue to say gato so we could work on our enunciation you know to get that accent in our bodies okay now my trial lately has been the subjective okay and i just finished I'm going to. I just finished used to. This is something where I'm doing with base length, right? And so the moment you're done with your lesson, okay? Whatever topic you may be on, okay? And please be at an hour. At least an hour. Try to push those hours. I do 30 minutes out there only when I know I'm like on my 12 hour days. I'm like, okay, I know I have to sleep. I'm just going to at least do 30 minutes so I could get ready for the night and go to sleep. But try to push yourself with those 30 minutes to an hour. And when you're off, push yourself as many hours as you can do. Okay, on your days off. I want you to be immersed in this. So, back to the hour. You finish with your instructor. You have your topic. Like my topic um, recently was, I told you, like, going to. And there was two ways they're going to introduce you. They're going to introduce, introduce you to the easy way and then a more difficult way with verbs. And, um... It's like, boy, ah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And what's interesting is what, how it's written, maybe it's not how it sounds, okay? So like, boy, a la casa de mi pacientes. I'm going to the house of my client, okay? And it's written, boy, a la casa de mi pacientes. And it sounds like, boy, ah. Boya, la casa de mi clientes. Okay? Because that boy and I comes together, it sounds as one, it's a unit. Just as when you're talking about the intimate two with vas or basa. You're going to say basa. Basa ir a la casa de, de tu amigo or su amigo or whatever the question may be or statement may be. But, you know, what, what is, how it's written and how it sound might be two different things especially with not like vamos but with vamos a vamos a is vamos a but with boya and pasa it is it's a different sound to what it is written because it would sound strange if you keep sitting there going boy a e la casa okay where you could get to start saying you know boya pasa or you're going and I'm going, for example. Now, the reason why I use that as an example is because you're going to practice speaking it with your instructor. When you get off, you're going to write it down in your frequency. Now, frequency book, okay? So in the morning, when you come back again, you're going to get used to saying it the way it should sound, and your brain is learning how it is written, okay? And so, because with our fingers, it's like hand-eye coordination. It's like mouth-brain coordination. For pretty soon, your brain is going to help your mouth, and your mouth sometimes will go first before your brain. You know, your mouth gets in the habit of saying it correctly, your brain is going to catch on. Like, that's what that is, okay? There's too many times when I have sat there and said, that is what that sounds like? Really? That, that is what it sounds like? Oh, my goodness. I, they gave me such a hard time with mama. I know mama, you know mama. How can mama be not mama? They was like, no, you're not emphasizing, it's mama. Mama, papa, 
papa, you know? I was, I was going, mama, I'm making a slap. Drove them crazy, their ears crazy. And that's why, you know, you have to sometimes, once, once you learn something, write it down and practice it. Even if it's just short sentences, practice it, speaking it out loud. So you, your ear gets used to what it sounds like. So when you hear it again, your ear and your brain recognize what is being said to you. Okay? So, that is my short, I know it sounds long, but this is, this is just a, my little short spell on baseline for the moment. What we're gonna do is gluing what we just learned down in, in writing. So whatever the topic may be, before you shut down, after you say adios, adios, wake up, ciao, you know, goodbye to you, nice to see you, gracias por tu tiempo. The moment that is done, you're gonna take out your book and write a few examples. And if you need to make a comment in the other book and say, you know, I have to remember, make, even when you do it two different sources, it's like another re layer of reinforcement. So even though you go into one book and write a practice sentence, right? But then you go into your other book or your Spanish stuff and say, remember, in this situation, it's common that this occurs. It's another layer for your brain and for your um, to understand what's going on and when you practice it for your tongue it to glue it together just all of a sudden slowly but surely it's going to come together and get inside us because that's what we're trying to do anyway my nombre es Kadira gracias a tu tiempo welcome to Spanish conmigo okay this is Baseline another day in Baseline and I'm so happy you're here with me I see you soon. Hasta luego. Basil, basil, basil.